Hello my soccer universe and uh, welcome to the review of what happened in England this weekend or a little bit more. I haven't done a video on the happenings in England for now almost two weeks uh, for the main reason that I kind of the FA Cup passed me by. I didn't really follow it. Uh, frankly I didn't watch it but we will talk about the FA Cup results as well because I realized you know I'm talking about other cup competitions as well and this FA Cup round was probably as good as others. And then we had of course the midweek around in the Premier and the Premier League again. Uh, we had quite some interesting results there as well. I'm wearing Norwich. Yes, technically the biggest change occurred for Wolves, but Norwich won a game and I have not worn this jersey a whole lot this season, so I decided, yeah. Let's go for this one. Nice present by Dan. I think his other one is hanging over there. So there you go. In any case, we'll start FA Cup. And I know I'm horribly late. This is about a week late, but I at least want to point out the few remarkable zones. I mean, uh, chief of which is Cambridge United beating Newcastle away from home. Uh, <laughs> we had Leicester Watford. I actually watched that for... Uh, Teeny second there, we had another Premier League duel with West Ham against Leeds 2-0, rather convincingly. And then uh, probably the, sh the other shock of the round was that Arsenal losing away to Nottingham Forest without even really having a shot on goal, despite playing in all-white jerseys, which, yeah, I like the idea behind uh, those jer jer jerseys, but the jerseys themselves, I was not too keen on. And then Manchester United get past Aston Villa. Kind of a prelude of what was happening on the weekend. So, uh, as I, I heard many brilliant games in there and it was a fun round. However, when I look at the draw for the next round, I, for instance, didn't put uh, Spurs and uh, Chelsea in this selection that I had because they played against a uh, really lower league tier opponents at home. Now we have almost the same here. Here, try to go for uh, kind of the, uh, the top teams from last season. And when I look at uh, Chelsea against Plymouth, <laughs> that doesn't make a, a whole lot of sense. It's a sense to me. I think they are uh, personally the German system or the Austrian system work, work, work works better where um, the lower level teams have actually a home field advantage. I think it isn't it. Uh, uh, means at least play at home to Weber West Ham from the sixth uh, tier. That I find pretty uh, impressive. We have. You know, uh, Wolves against Norwich is pro. Uh, yeah, Everton, Brent, 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 Brentford are kind of the standard ties, and Spurs, Brighton. Yes. Also, we have a few Premier League matchups. But, you know, I actually look a little bit also at Nottingham against Leicester City. City. Maybe there's another upset that can happen. Then, moving further, we had almost immediately and also some makeup games um, from the round that was before Christmas with Southampton. Beat Brentford 4-1 and then West Ham against Norwich, uh, another 2-0. We still have four make, make, make games from that round. So there was lots of stuff happening. And then on the weekend, um, we had the big one. I mean, it started off with uh, the most... I don't, I don't want to, um, you know... I don't want to say made up, but it's the most peculiar rivalry in the Premier the Premier League one between Brighton and Crystal Palace. Which, if you're an outsider and you don't know much of the Premier League, uh, you go, huh? Like me. But you know, they needed a rival each each, each of those. Uh, there probably was some incident that I heard that I heard of. So. Uh, good on them for uh, forging a rivalry. This one ends 1-1. One, one. I think Crystal Palace had a very late e equalizer. To me, uh, there were two standout ties um, on the schedule. One which didn't happen. Uh, but Manchester City against Chelsea. This was more or less the last chance for Chelsea to get into the back in, into the title race. And boy, did they disappoint. Um, I remember only one good uh, chance where Lukaku plowed through and then played a very poor pass to Ziyech who couldn't get through, through it where I'm thinking yeah either, either you go yourself a little bit more precise maybe you have a chance but it was all possession city um, Chelsea just trying to limit their passing options and City kind of toying around with Chelsea which I was very disappointed and um, I also found, I mean, as great as this City team is, I actually find them a little bit uh, boring to watch at times. I mean, I did fall asleep 
during the first uh during dur during the first half because it didn't really rivet me and you know after a good lunch and so on um uh, yeah it uh just happened um the longer the game went without the more clear it became that city is just the better team and uh it's only a matter of time and then the moment came with kevin de bruyne making a run up uh, and then even stopping it a little bit to shift his weight on the other foot and taking a really nicely placed shot and make it 1-0 for City and uh, basically eliminating Chelsea from a title uh, contention. And to be honest, uh, with the forward line that they had, yes, Lukaku was their star signing, but he disappointed on almost every account. So yeah, uh, it was over a rather easy scene for City, uh, easy win for City, easy scene for Viti. I'm tired. It has been a long day today. And yeah, I actually would say uh, Chelsea definitely out of the tie title race and it all points to Manchester City. The last thing I want to say to today, because I read an article in Footy Headlines about it today, and I find it so so ridiculous. Uh, should blue against blue happen? Oh yeah, please, more of that. I really like the dark blue against the light blue. Better than any other jersey options in this matchup. Really, this is perfect as perfect can be. And if I look at uh, the other options, I mean, uh, Chelsea maybe has a very dark, uh, almost black kit, but I'd rather have them play in the blue one. And if I say at, at Chelsea, see, they, they don't really have the options. Uh, yeah, you can go with the white one, but honestly, this is beautiful the way it looks. Blue on blue, uh, bring it on. Uh, please preserve that because it works just fine. Just FIFA has a problem with it. So uh, I was happy that they played the Champions League final that way. And may I say that those Chelsea jerseys are actually growing on me? Yeah, weird. Um, Newcastle United held for a long time a lead over Watford and had to give up a late uh, equalizer. Norwich, I think, had a 2 0 lead over Everton. Everton just pulled one back, which was then the end of line for Rafa Benitez. Um, yes, at the moment, as, as we'll see, Norwich City are not last in the table anymore. But, you know, with games in hand, they are kind of still sort of uh, last. Everton, uh, I don't know who they will now bring in or so on. I think Duncan Ferguson is, is uh, kind of being in the books. Or, uh, Roberto Martinez, I would... I'm really worried about where Everton is going because that is a club that is going the completely wrong, wrong direction. It was about, supposed to go up and it's going all the way down. And uh, this is a team that seems to be a huge mess that don't have the right people up top in in many, many cases. And that Rafa Benitez experiment, you know, getting a defensive coach for a team that actually wants to go up, I think it was, you know... I want to be open-minded, but it didn't look right. And I'm not even talk to talking about the Liverpool uh, pass there. Uh, an ent more entertaining game was between Aston Villa and Manchester United, where Bruno Fernandes twi uh, scored two, two goals. I gotta say, the, um, in the first 50 minutes, United were actually really, really good. Really, really good. I mean, they dominated the game. Let, let us put it, but the uh, go-ahead had a goal was a howler from Emmy Martinez and then he looks at uh, who else can I blame here no didn't happen yeah you gotta blame yourself on that one and uh, Aston Villa though got back into, into the game and the game was level and I thought yeah um maybe if they score a goal then we could get really in an in, in interesting game and then Bruno Fernandes with an admittedly really great shot made, made it 2-0 for uh, United and in, in a way I thought yeah that's game done done and dusted I also thought that what I understand, the jersey matchup, it was not a great jersey matchup. Uh, I actually wonder why the red, an all red look of Manchester United wouldn't work, or you know, red and black. Uh, because you know, yes, this is dark red, but I think against bright uh, red, this should work. I thought I, I found it more co confusing the way it was with the light blue jerseys, and because there's the light blue on Aston Villa's shirt, so um. Just putting it out there. I found the Georgia's match a little bit weird. However, the match was rather entertaining. And guess who flipped it? Continue. <laughs> it is one of those tra tra transfers where I wonder, did anyone really want to have Coutinho? Barcelona uh, joyous that they have him off the books for now. He comes on, assists the first one, and then scores the second one himself. And it's a 2-2 for Aston Villa. And then at the point where I really was worried about Manchester United conceding as well, because uh, that just went too fast. 
or I think a draw, probably a fair result. Yesterday, uh, Liverpool a 3 0 over Brentford, um, where you know you thought Liverpool cannot score and then they got it going. You know, uh, Salah and Mane at the FCON. And probably the most entertaining week uh, game of the, of the weekend I didn't watch because I thought, yeah, I better watch some FCON or the Dutch League. And I uh, lost out big time on that one. Um, although I'm not sure if I would have seen it because they surely would have shown Liverpool, but you know, maybe, maybe, maybe second channel. Leeds United being where West Ham 3 2 when you just lost at the FA Cup. And actually, Leeds United um, taking twice the lead, West Ham coming twice back. And you really thought West Ham could probably could turn it around, but they get the winner. Pretty big win. And that the North London derby uh, was cancelled. Yeah, made it easier for me to watch the FCON, to be honest, but it was also a bummer because I was a little bit looking forward to uh, that game. So, uh, let's see what are the upcoming uh, games. Um, yeah, we have a few makeup games from round 17, uh, the last three. So, this is now uh, mid December that need, need, need to be made up. They come on Tuesday and on Wednesday. And in, in addition, we take one from uh, around 24, which is around this actually happening at the early January, uh, February. Brighton against Chelsea is now pulled in. I think it has to do with Chelsea playing uh, League Cup, FA Cup and blah, blah, blah. That they want to open up some fixtures uh, there. The rest of, of the games, uh, I'm not sure if it will actually happen the way they are scheduled right, right here. I think there will be a lot of shuffling around um and then the, the we have a full round over the weekend with again a uh, look at the bottom we have chelsea against spurs um is this now a battle for thought of what does chelsea need to worry a little bit maybe maybe may, maybe not crystal palace against liverpool will be interesting i think uh because you know liverpool still will not have their african players uh back Leeds United against New Newcastle, uh, sounds something on the bottom there. And yeah, Southampton, Manchester, Manchester City, maybe, just maybe, I don't see it. In a way, the most competitive game might as well be Manchester United against West Ham United. Um, with the winner, probably the one that will have uh, realistic chances for top four. Speaking of top four, current standings, it is all City. Uh, Liverpool has only a minuscule chance of qual qual qualifying. Yes, they have a game in hand and it's eight points. No, it ain't gonna happen. The one thing I, I was wondering if Manchester City now again uh, seal up the league or early on. Is this good for them in the Champions League? That remains to be seen. On the bottom, Everton still with a little bit of cushion, but uh, watch out for Burnley. Many makeup games happening there. So that's why Burnley, although being last in the table, have only 44% chance of being uh, relegated. Newcastle in a bigger jeopardy there. Norwich, of course, as well. But, you know, hey, if they start winning, there might be something happening. Leeds also a little bit uh, climbing up at the moment. But I think, the, at, at, at least if you look, look at top, the most uh, interesting race is, of course, now for top four, where West Ham, yes, is in fourth spot. But Arsenal and Spurs have many, many, many games in hands. And I actually think, and that's why I was looking so much forward to his North London now, it's between those two teams uh, that will make up the fourth spot. I don't necessarily see West Ham and Manchester United making a run for it. Um, but, you know, United also has a few games in hand. In any case, that was it for me for what was happening over the last two weeks in England. Uh, please add anything you want uh, below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell. So in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.